just regarding fantasy, let me tell you something about fantasy. Uh, here. Here. Amazing. Read it. If you're going to start off, well, this is sci fi, it's not fantasy, my apologies. But I hope most people, when they say fantasy, they also mean sci fi. But what, about this, what I'm about to say applies to. Uh, oh, sorry, this is the wrong one. Dune. <laughs> this is Dune Messiah. This one, Dune. Read it. Science fiction, right? I haven't read this one yet, it's the continuation of it. But Dune, it's supposed to be really good too. But Dune, read it. So, what is the appeal to this? Okay. In Dune, okay, and in many fantasy books, many books that explore, I mean, there, there's multiple reasons, right? One of the reasons is because it, it's, it explores the limits of human understanding, of human imagination, of human creativity, really. I've went through school, okay, this is going to be the long version. We'll do the uh, olive, we'll do the quadratic the maximization in about five minutes okay so if you need to grab a glass of water or something uh, apologies about this but might as well address this because it's pretty important right when i went to school when i was going to school i did half of it in a catholic school half of it in public school and stuff like this i came across teachers and i've come across the philosophy the the belief system that states that human imagination is limited Okay, because everything that we have in our society, uh, when it comes to tools, when it comes to technology, when it comes to our social structures, are mimics, are mimicked from what we see in the natural world, right? There's a period where I totally disagreed with that. There's a period that I totally agreed with that. Now, that's growing up. Now I'm in a state of mind that I believe that is very individual based, right? If you explore your thoughts, your imagination, and other people's thoughts and imaginations, what you end up doing is doing either of two things, right? And this is related to economics because there's mainly two types of things that give value, two types of um, there, there's more, but the two main general ones, right? There's two ways that the economic cycle gets gets a boost, or a product gets a boost, or or you see business growing. One of them is you come up with something brand new, or one of, the other one is value added. You take something and add something additional to it. So if you're exploring other people's psyche, imagination, thoughts, uh, worlds, universes that they've built. Initially, what you're going to do, unless you're a child and a child has an imagination that is vast, right? Much greater than most adults, okay? They, they half their lives, children when they're growing up, if, if you watch them growing up, a huge percentage, a percentage of their lives is in the imaginary world, right? I think I'm beginning to understand already. By investing time into how others dream into reality, uh, you further your own life experience and knowledge 100% 100% so initially aside from you know let's say you've been in the in indoctrination centers for a while and your imagination has been crushed right and you're 100% living in this state right if you start reading other people's thoughts and creations you can delve into those dive into those and just journey with them right and if you do enough of this or if you meditate on what they've created all of a sudden you're going to start doing a little bit of value at it you're going to start giving your own twist to their stories right and from that imagination is really comes about what we see in our current economic system in our current political system in our social structures and everything right and there is a tremendous amount of truth that's one aspect of it the other aspect is there's a tremendous amount of truth being told in science fiction and fantasy, right? If you want to link this up to religion, there's a there's a there's a, that whole story where you know disciples ask prophets why you know certain prophets use uh, stories, parables, and stuff like this to uh, 
to talk about moral dilemmas in our societies, right? Or spiritual dilemmas and stuff like this. And their reply in general is because we human beings uh, can more easily relate to stories that we understand, right? Than straight up saying, this is bad, right? So, for example, in Dune, one of the mantras in Dune that you encounter is, quote, right? Fear is the mind killer. And that phrase, fear is the mind killer, I have no idea. I'm pretty sure online you could find it. How many times that phrase is stated in this book? And that is one of the main theses of Dune, aside from other theses that it has, aside from other points that it has, right? Now, when you read Dune, by the end of it, you have a phenomenal understanding of what it means when you realize finally that fear is the mind killer. Now, fear is the mind killer is also prevalent within spiritual texts, within uh, physical fitness, within martial training, within certain types of disciplines. So they've taken something that's present in many other disciplines and incorporated it into a teaching of a science or telling of a science fiction story okay and there's a lot more to this as well a lot more to this phenomenal if you want sci-fi you've never read dune this is one of the must read books in your life read okay